As residents continue to evacuate, Carolina's Florence has now been rated a Category 3 storm. However, the U.S. National Hurricane Center has said the life-threatening storm is still expected across portions of the Carolinas. The hurricane was about 470 miles of South Carolina with maximum sustained winds of 125 miles per hour. Although slow weakening is expected to begin by late Thursday, Florence is still forecast to be an extremely dangerous major hurricane when it nears the U.S. coast late Thursday and Friday. Hungary's foreign minister has said his country would seek legal ways to challenge the EU parliament's ruling to start a punitive procedure against Budapest. The foreign minister Peter Zijarto also slammed European parliament calling it a petty revenge of pro-immigration politicians. The European parliament voted on Wednesday to sanction Hungary for flouting EU rules on democracy, civil rights and corruption in an unprecedented step that left Prime Minister Viktor Orban isolated from powerful allies. The United Nations Trade and Development Agency has said Palestinian citizens are trapped in an economy of jobless growth with no prospects, especially in Gaza, which is undergoing de-development. The report said unemployment in the Palestinian territories was the highest in the world in 2017. Half of Palestinians under 30 were unemployed, coordinator of the report said. The major reason for this situation from an economic development point of view was a set of Israeli restrictions such as permit systems for Palestinians to work in Israel. France's foreign minister has said that the indiscriminate bombing of Syria's Idlib region by Russian, Syrian and Iranian forces could amount to war crimes. Jean Ledrian said the hypotheses of war crimes can not be ruled out when you carry out indiscriminate bombing on civilian populations and hospitals. Syrian government and Russian warplanes began airstrikes in Idlib last week in a possible prelude to a full-scale offensive as aid organizations said several medical facilities have already been targeted. French lawmakers have elected Richard Ferrand, the politician loyal to President Emmanuel Macron, as new head of the National Assembly. Perrin was formerly the leader of the parliamentary group of Macron's Republic on the Move party, which has a majority in the National Assembly. Members of Parliament from left and right have slammed the choice of Perrin, citing the scandal and said it symbolised Macron's disregard for the separation of powers. Other lawmakers said the new president should have been a woman, which would have been a first for the chamber. United Nations envoy to Libya has said a new security arrangement would be implemented in the next few days despite the rocket fire that led to shutdown of Tripoli airport. Nobody was hurt by the rocket fire late on Tuesday which missed all aircraft but the violence undermined a fragile truce between the groups in Tripoli which the United Nations brokered last week. Libya closed the only functioning airport in the capital and all planes and crews were moved to Misrata airport east of the capital after rockets were fired in its direction. The one of its kind and LGBT friendly mosque in Germany's Berlin is helping Muslim youth to de radicalize the mosque has prevented many youth from going to Syria and fighting for Islamic State. According to Europe's police organization Europol, more than 5,000 Europeans, most from Britain, France, Germany and Belgium, have joined fighters in Syria and Iraq. Founded in 2017 by a feminist lawyer, the mosque allows men and women to pray together. Afghanistan's chief executive Abdullah Abdullah has said Afghan people are against the Talibanization of the nation. Abdullah added that it will be in the best interest of the country if the Taliban gave up their links with what he called terrorist groups and entered the political process. He said Afghans were glad to see Taliban commanders giving up violence during Eid celebrations. Abdullah added that lack of credible intelligence led to the gruesome attack in Ghazni province and the attack could have been averted.
Egypt's public prosecutor has said that E. coli bacteria was a factor in the deaths of two British tourists in the Red Sea resort of Hurghada last month. The prosecutor said John Cooper was suffering from health problems, but that E. coli was a cause of heart failure that led to his death. Cooper's wife Susan was also likely to have been affected by E. coli and died of gastroenteritis. It gave the details in a statement of an official medical report after an investigation into their deaths. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is considering a ban on flavored e-cigarettes in response to an epidemic of young people using e-cigarettes. FDA Commissioner said the agency would also revisit its compliance policy that extended the dates for manufacturers of flavored e-cigarettes to submit applications for pre-market authorization. FDA chief announced a number of steps the agency planned to take as part of a broader crackdown on the sale and marketing of e-cigarettes to kids. British Prime Minister Theresa May has said if London does not reach an exit deal with the European Union, the position changes on its agreement to pay a financial settlement to the bloc. As part of a Brexit transition deal, Britain has agreed to pay the EU between 35 and 39 million euros over the coming decades. May's comments to Parliament come as reports surface that about 50 Brexit-supporting lawmakers in her party have met to discuss how and when they could force her out of her job. After making its way through three continents since the end of World War II, a painting stolen by Nazis by famed French artist Pierre Auguste Rodin has been returned to its original owner. The handover of painting took place during a ceremony at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in New York. The painting's original owner was Alfred Winberger, a well-known pre-war art collector. The work was completed by Renoir in 1990. European Union lawmakers have agreed on a common position on copyright reforms ahead of talks with the 28 EU countries on legislation to force Google, Facebook and other tech giants to share revenues more fairly with Europe's creative industries. 438 lawmakers have voted in favour while 226 were against with 39 abstentions. The next step is negotiations with the European Commission and the 28 EU countries to reconcile their different positions before updating the existing copyright laws. Energy issues are likely to be on the agenda at a meeting between Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and Russian President Vladimir Putin next Tuesday in Moscow. Hungary imports most of its gas from Russia under a long-term supply agreement due to expire by 2020. Hungary Foreign Minister has said another long-term agreement was not yet on the agenda, but pre preparatory negotiations on how to go forward had been launched. Hungary has promoted Moscow's interests within the European Union, repeatedly calling for the ending of economic sanctions imposed after Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014. Iran's ambassador to the International Atomic Energy Agency has said Tehran is continuing to abide by the nuclear agreement abandoned by the US, but that if the deal is to survive, Iran should also benefit it. Efforts by the remaining signatories of the deal, Britain, France and Germany, plus China and Russia, to avoid the agreement's collapse are struggling as Washington has threatened sanctions against firms dealing with Tehran. U.S. President Donald Trump announced in May that the United States would quit the accord and reimpose sanctions on Iran. Former top officials of the U.S. financial institutions have warned of vulnerabilities in international economies, the U.S. rising debt level and the limited powers the Federal Reserve has of preventing a future crisis as they reflected on the lessons learned from the 2008 financial crisis. Former U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner said that the U.S. economy was currently strong enough that he didn't foresee a financial crisis beginning from within, but did not rule that vulnerabilities in other economies could spark a problem that would affect the international markets. The World Health Organization's Cancer Research Agency has said that cancer will claim the lives of 9.6 million people in 2018. 
WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer estimates that the global cancer burden will rise to an estimated 18.1 million new cases this year. According to the report, in emerging economies, there is also a shift from cancer related to poverty and infections towards cancer linked to lifestyle and diets more typical of wealthier countries. Zimbabwe's police has issued a ban on all public gatherings to control the spread of cholera, which has killed 21 people in the capital of Harare. The move comes a day after the government declared an emergency following the outbreak of the disease. In a statement, the National Police spokeswoman urged member of the public to take heed of the ban as it would assist in alleviating the spread of cholera, but did not say how long the ban would last. This is the biggest cholera outbreak since 2008, when 4,000 people died and more than 40,000 were treated for the disease. Anti-whaling countries have collided with Japan's bid to resume commercial whaling operations and end a 32-year-old moratorium during the year's annual meeting in Brazil. Japan is one of a handful of countries, including Norway and Iceland, which continue to hunt the ocean mammals by making use of a loophole allowing scientific whaling where carcasses are examined for before the meat is sold for consumption. Japan faces stiff opposition from countries like Australia and environmental groups. Heavy rains in various parts of northern India have swelled the water in Ganges River, creating a flood-like situation and disrupting normal life in the temple town of Varanasi. The water level in the river Ganga was increasing rapidly since the last five days due to incessant rains and the first level of stairs at the Ghats was completely submerged on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Allahabad was left with waterlogged streets and flooded localities after heavy rains pounded the city. A traffic cop in Bhuvaneshwar city has been grabbing eyeballs with his dance moves that he has been using to control the traffic movement. Pratap Chandra adopted the unique technique of controlling traffic and making people obey traffic rules four years ago. And since then, he has been using gestures and dance moves on duty to create awareness and prevent any chaos leading to accidents. Chandra said he came up with the idea to show actions to commuters in order to attract their attention and make them follow the rules. Protests were held in several cities on Wednesday to demand immediate arrest of a bishop accused of raping a Kerala nun over a period of two years. Women in Jalandhar city carrying flags and banners raised slogans and marched on the roads while protesters in Kochi city held a sit-in protest to condemn the delay in the arrest of the bishop. Meanwhile, Kerala police has asked the accused bishop Franco Mulakal to appear before the investigating team on September 19th. Mulakal has accused the nun of lying and making up a case.